if I can see kind of like the artist putting their truest self into the piece, that makes it art to me. When I draw or paint or do really anything with visual art, that's when I feel like the most, my most true self. I just love feeling like that, you know? Like, I just love feeling like, yes, I made this, I brought life to this blank canvas. Like, I really like bringing life to things. That's what I like the most about it. My name is Morgan Ruth, and I'm from Louisville, Kentucky, and I'm studying at MTSU as an animation major. I'm also double minoring in art and art history. And I'm hoping in the future that I will be able to animate this comic book that I'm working on. I love food. I love cooking. It's something that kind of like brings me back to my childhood and brings me back to my family. I feel like I gather a lot of inspiration from my family because they've like, they've definitely fostered my creativity from a young age. I like, add to add to the list of things that I love is definitely my family and the family that I'm creating here at MT. I guess when I make art, I feel the most myself. I would kind of describe it sort of as like a mirror of my mind, I guess. I mean, of course, like comic book stuff versus like things that I make, there's a difference there. When it comes to that piece like right behind you, it's like, I guess I feel the most intensely and I don't really feel, I guess, judged for like the way that I feel. I will definitely say that my upbringing contributed to my style of art. Like from a very young age, my parents, they exposed me to a lot of Eastern media. Like they really love Studio Ghibli. Like I remember from a very young age, we would all gather on the TV and watch Studio Ghibli. And it was just very wholesome. And Hayao Miyazaki, he, it's funny because he draws inspiration from Western, like folklore. I find that interesting because I like to draw from Eastern stuff, so it's kind of like a trade off there. I think it's pretty cool. And I'm very glad that they exposed me to that. And my dad, he was an artist as well. Like, he did a lot of very abstract artwork. He, when I was a baby, he would cover a room full of posters and just let me go crazy with markers. Like he would just let me draw on the walls that was like covered in posters and whatnot. And apparently my favorite thing to draw was the number five. Like that was the first thing I ever drew. When I draw or paint or do really anything with visual art, that's when I feel like the most, my most true self. I just love feeling like that, you know? Like I just love feeling like, yes, I made this, I brought life to this blank canvas. Like I really like bringing life to things. That's what I like the most about it. And then like, I feel like it's a very patient practice. So you kind of have to chisel away at it, but that gives you more time and it allows you to like pour more of yourself into it. I will definitely say that Salvador Dali is honestly very inspiring to me. I actually have a book about his work. I can't name my favorite piece off the top of my head because his names are usually like really long. But my people, we had like a poster that advertised one of his shows like in Louisville. And so that's how I was like, I wonder who that guy is. And then I started like looking at his stuff more. And I really appreciate how he like, how all of his stuff is kind of metaphorical in a way. I really like Hokusai. Um, I have this whole book of Eastern art, so I'm not really sure like what the actual artist's names are. I haven't like read the descriptions that much, but like I look at them because I really like their use of colors. My, my dad probably shouldn't have let me watch what he was letting me watch when I was like six. He let me watch like these samurai shows. It was a bit violent for a six year old, but I feel like it helped out art wise, honestly. It wasn't too much. Typical day. I try to get up early, but I really like to sleep because I have the craziest dreams. Sometimes I would literally just go back to bed and try to continue the dream. And I've been reading more of this book called The Surrealist Manifesto. And it talks about like the, yes, right there, exactly. 
the Surrealist Manifesto. And it tells you about the importance of dreams and like what they mean. So I do like sleeping, yes, but I know my limits. I have self-control when it comes to that, thank goodness. I usually get up and I make some tea and then I'm like, okay, what do I want to listen to today? Because I feel very inspired by music. I can sit down and draw for like six hours like without interruption as long as I got some really good music I can just draw and like usually I'm either working on commissions or stuff for the comic book or just like practicing with my hands and I always make a point to get up and walk I go on these little things called like mindfulness walks to just help you like get to center like without any music or anything you just walk around and like look at the trees look at the sky check out the birds <laughs> I feel like that's that's one of the things I try to pay attention to throughout the day is just like how I'm doing mentally because I feel like that very much affects my performance and plus I think it's just good in general to be like mindful of like how you are feeling in the moment when I'm in a creative slump I think that's where those mindfulness walks like really help out because like if I go on a walk and listen to New Jambas or something, and I just look around, like I feel very inspired by nature because like, I don't know, like I posted this once before. It was my most recent one, I think. It was like nature gives you little gifts every day. So like, if I'm in a creative slump, like watching the sunrise or like watching the sunset or looking at stars and whatever nature has to offer me. I feel like that helps out. My perfect setup, hot chocolate, incense, bottled water, cause you gotta stay hydrated. My music, 100%. And I just wear earbuds because like, I don't need people knowing my business like that. I mean, and then it's just covered with whatever, you know? Like if I'm working on painting, then this whole room is gonna be dedicated to what I'm doing because it gets messy. And I'm surprised there's not any more oil paint stains on my floor. <laughs> I definitely practice a lot, but I'm also trying to allow room for more experimentation. Like I've been trying different mediums out and I've gotten into oil painting recently. I haven't had any um, formal training on it, but I've just been trying to do, like I've just been trying to find crazy stuff to paint with. Like I had a bouquet in my closet, it was like fake flowers. And I cut it up and I started painting with that. And then I have that fake katana up there and I painted with that, which is pretty cool. It's just like finding these weird little things to paint with. Practice, practice, practice. That's number one. But number two is to, I don't know, I feel like when we're younger, we kind of don't know what to do with our angst. You know, when we like feel negative things. And it's like, sure, art can be about more positive things because that's what I used to do when I was younger. It was like, I wanna like draw happy things most of the time or like come from a happy place when I do art. Like I wanna feel good when I do art. But when you come to the drawing table, like feeling like absolute garbage, you can still make something really cool like coming from that place. So like, Definitely don't get discouraged if you don't feel the best about yourself or your situation. Like, don't let that hold you back. 